Alright folks, uh, today I want to talk about custom functions and methods. Uh, the word methods and functions are pretty much the same word. Um, <clears throat> and the definition is that a function or a method is basically just a set of instructions that you can repeat really easily. And what I mean by that is this. So if we scroll down here and we look at the mouse pressed function here. Mouse pressed is a special function that processing owns and when you hit the mouse it does it. Well what do I want mouse press to do? Well you can see inside of the curly brackets of mouse pressed I have another function called stamp. But you can see here the difference is that stamp is actually uh, colored black and mouse pressed is colored blue which means that stamp is a uh, not a special function. It means that I made it up. Uh, so let's go see what stamp does. Uh, let's you know jump down through our code here and we can see ah here is whoops here is uh, the stamp function, the whole function. And uh, functions have a, a little bit of anatomy to them. Uh, they have a return type. Uh, this means the, the kind of thing that uh, stamp gives back. And in this case, it gives back nothing. Uh, that's what void means. A lot of you have asked me, you know, what does void setup mean and what does void draw mean? And the answer is that's the, the variable that that thing kicks back. Uh, for instance, if you were going to write a function for, say, sign, you'd have to say float sign, and then this will be the, the, the sign function. That function already exists in processing, so we don't need to write it, but uh, find this on, um, angle. So that's the sort of, uh, this is the signature of the sign function. And you can see here that we have the word float in this position instead of the word void, because if you you know if you push sign on your calculator, it gives back a decimal number. So that's that's how that works. If you hit stamp, it doesn't give back anything. It just draws a picture. It's like a, a stamp, like for a scrapbook. You can see here I have a set of instructions inside the curly brackets. You know it changes the color of things. It draws a couple ellipses, changes the color again, and then draws a rectangle around it. We're basically just making sort of a random stamp. Um, so now I have this set of instructions and I can use stamp anywhere I want. Uh, you know, so I could say, okay, well, when the mouse is pressed, let's run stamp. And you see here I just run the function with this. And let's actually run it and see what happens. Um, so the point here is, again, it's, it's to organize your code better. Um, so look, now wherever I click the mouse, I can make a stamp. Well, that's cute. But I could have just put that in, in the mouse pressed function. So I could have just taken all this code and put it in the mouse pressed function. So what's the point? Well, if I want to use stamp somewhere else, let's say that up here in the draw function, and we'll talk about this in a minute. That's the next example. Uh, let's say that we wanted to actually, you know, draw some stamps and use them in two places. Well, let's say, um, you know, we want to call stamp here. Well, now we're going to have completely different behavior. I'm going to have a, a stamp drawn wherever the mouse is uh, with the draw function. And I'm also going to be able to click the mouse and put it wherever I want. So right here, you can see this is going to get a little bit crazy. I now can put a stamp wherever I drag the mouse, but I can also put it there when I click. Uh, so now we can use that function in more than one place. That's the purpose of making functions. Okay, uh, this gets a little bit more difficult than stamp. So let's look at this second function that I built here. Uh, called factorial. And factorial is, uh, you guys know factorial, I'm sure, from math class. It's where you take a number and you put the exclamation point behind it and it equals 3 times 2 times 1. So this equals 6. Uh, and so let's write the function that your calculator actually uses to calculate that. So when you put in factorial of 6 billion, which is really, really hard to do, uh, your calculator figures it out after a couple seconds. Well, how does it do it? Well, let's make a function. So we all we're going to do is uh, make a function called factorial and it returns an integer. Okay, so instead of returning nothing or instead of returning a float or instead of returning an array, it returns an integer because when you multiply integers uh, you get integers. Uh, and this function is also special because it requires an input. And so this is what the parentheses are really for. Uh, if you've taken a math class where they've done f of x, okay, so we have that structure from math class where it's as simple as it can be. f is the function, f, and x is the input. So you could say, you know, if f equals, you know, 3x, then we could say, well, what's f of 2? Well, you know how to do that. You do 3 times 2, and you get 6. So you just plug in 
uh, you plug in, you know, whatever this is in the parentheses here. We're going to do the same thing here, except it's a little more complicated. We have to tell it what type of number it's going to be. So we're going to get an integer n. So if you're going to read this in math class, it might say factorial of n. Okay, and then we go through and calculate the factorial. So we create this integer called factorial, which is going to be the answer. And we're going to set it equal to 1, just to give it some value. And then we're going to have a for loop, where we start off at n, and we're going to go down to 1 and we're going to go down by ones, which is exactly this process right here. And then we say the factorial variable equals factorial times the new number, and then we spit back out the factorial. So because I called an integer here, I have to return an integer here. If I comment this line of code out, the program will barf everywhere. So it says this method, this method must return a type int. Well, I took the return out, and as soon as I put this back in, it, it'll run. Okay, but just because we coded for the factorial function doesn't mean it's actually going to work. So we actually have to use that function, and that's what I did up here. So let me uncomment that. You can see here that I'm actually printing to the screen, so I'm making some text. I'm printing to the screen the results of this factorial function. Okay, and this is all this font stuff, and you can look up how to load a font if you really want to. It's in a, uh, at the end of the ghosts video actually. Uh, we could also use the factorial uh, in a different way. We could say integer, you know, z equals factorial of some huge number that we'd never want to do ourselves. And now you could use that variable later, you know, z blah blah blah. You have control over that. Um, so when we print this, we're going to see up in the upper left hand side of the screen the factorial of 8. Okay, which is evidently 40,320. We could also make this a little bit fancier. Let's say what's the factorial of 84? Well, it's a much, much, much bigger number. Uh, in fact, it's zero. Uh, why is it zero? Because we have overloaded the size of an integer. So what we should do now is say, I hope this works, long, long. Oh, we don't even need to do that. It can still be an integer. Uh, we need to change this to a long. Let's see if this works. Um, cannot convert. Oh, let's just get rid of this line. So we've converted our function to spit out longs, and it's using and it's returning a long. Let's see if it can handle the factorial of 84 anymore. Uh, 0, 0.000 doesn't quite work. Looks like the factorial of 84 is just too big. Let's try something smaller. The factorial of 22. Okay, well isn't that fantastic? So that's negative. So it's actually looped all the way back around. Um, to the point where the computer can't keep track of it, but it's not so big that it, it loses all the information. So interesting, we're actually sort of forcing the computer, uh, we're, we're showing some memory problems with the computer. So let's switch back to ints here, uh, this is an int, and let's do a number that we know it can handle. Let's do the factorial of you know, 10. And we get factorial of 10, which is huge. Okay, that's making custom functions. Uh, anytime you want to repeat a bunch of code and you need to use it in a bunch of different places, uh, you can make a custom function.